Good morning. And welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Springfield. If you're a visitor with us today, welcome. We are so glad you're here. Uh, we do have a guest pianist with us. And um, I don't know, Megan, are you going to say a little more about her? Or she's just going to... Okay. So that's going to be fun. Um, and we're just glad she's here with her mom. Uh, we're here to worship God. Uh, we have some announcements before we begin things. So, Anna Green, will you please uh, lead us in some of those announcements? Yes, I will. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see the pews are filling up. I love it. Thank you for joining us today. Just a few notes. Our coffee cove. There are only two people signed up for the entire rest of the year. If you would please take a moment when you're leaving in the narthex and be willing to bring a few tasty treats that we all get to enjoy every Sunday. That would be wonderful. Tower Youth tonight, 6.30 to 8. And our October mission of the month is the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance and their continued efforts to help those in Tennessee, Louisiana, and right here in the Northeast. Please consider giving to this vital Presbyterian ministry. Thank you. Let's open our time with, <clears throat> with a prayer before uh, we uh, begin with a praise song and then have our kids come forward so that they can go on to their WOW Sunday School. Let's, let's pray. God, we're grateful that uh, we have hope. Uh, not just hope that one day you will make all things new in a... Uh, in a new creation, a new heaven and earth, and a sweet reunion with all of God's people. Uh, but your spirit is already making that happen now. And your spirit can enliven us, bring us hope where we need it, and, and uh, pull joy out of even deep suffering. So we bring our hearts to you, God, and we ask that you fill them with your spirit and fill them with the joy of being with one another as brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ as we worship you. Amen. What do you want me to do? Oh. <laughs> Would you please stand for our, our praise song? To the depth of the sea, creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable. Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, awestruck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing, God. Who has told every lightning bolt where it should go? Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow? Who imagined the sun and gives source to its light? Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night. None can fathom, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All 
powerful, untamable, awestruck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing God. Indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. All powerful, unchangeable, awestruck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing God. You are amazing. Please be seated and we uh, ask our kids to come forward for children's time. Good morning, guys. Raise your hand if you've ever come up to a place that you couldn't walk through. Like, like a wall. Have you ever stood in front of a wall? It's really hard to go through a wall, right? Okay. Raise your hand if you've ever been insanely hungry, so hungry you could eat your own arm. I know I have. It barely made it here this morning in one piece. Well, guess what? People in the Bible had the same exact thing happen, and what do you think happened? They, they ended up having to eat their arms. Or another story that you'll find out about today. You might even say that we'll have to part ways for you to get there. <laughs> but until that time, we all know that most of the time, spoilers, God will protect us, right? I see your hand. I'm going to have you wait for a moment, okay? So before we send you off, let's all bow our heads and fold our hands and say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey guys, have so much fun. And as the kids head out, let's, uh, let's prepare our hearts for worship. Uh, also, we just like to make sure we uh, are recognizing that uh, we're joined today, not just by in person, those of us here, but also probably 20, 30 people at least, or more than that really, because those are just people who are subscribing. Um, on our online feed. So we welcome you guys. I'll look at the camera. We welcome you guys. We're glad you're with us too. And we recognize that uh, some of you just aren't able to be here. Uh, and uh, so you're in our hearts and we're with you. The psalmist said, be still and know that I am God. So let us be still. Be still and know God. 
Be still and know. Be still and be. Please stand and join me in the responsive call to worship. Listen to the stories of God. Listen to the Son of God. Teaching us how to live, love, and serve. Listen to the voice of God. Proclaiming the broken world beloved. Listen and worship, people of God. Please remain standing and let us sing together hymn number 475, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Then you may be seated as we sing together how deep the Father's love for us with the praise band. Mar the 
chosen one bring all of us to glory behold the man upon a cross my sin upon his shoulders ashamed i hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished his dying breath that brought me life I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything no gifts no power no wisdom but i will boast in jesus christ his death and resurrection why should i gain from his reward i cannot give an answer but this i know with all my heart have paid my ransom why should i gain from his reward i cannot give an answer but this i know with all my heart his wounds have paid my Confident in God's grace, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Father, forgive us for our ignoring the fifth commandment. We so often do not honor our father and mother. We wait too long to express affection. We are not always straightforward with our parents. We too easily assent to the glorifying of youth in our culture. We hesitate to carry our maturity into these elemental relationships. Have mercy on us. Forgive us also wherever we misuse authority and for wherever we treat tradition superficially. Forgive us and make new our relationships through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By the grace and love of our Savior Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. In response to God's great love, let us stand and sing together hymn number 582, Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me.
Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us greet one another in peace. As we move into our time of prayer together, we have had a couple of prayers, uh, prayer requests submitted just to share these. Uh, This is from Rachel Duncan and her family. Uh, Rachel, her sister is someone we've been praying for and in particular her um, her sister's son, Jack, who we prayed for, the little infant. And, uh, you know, they lost him, but she has good news to report. She says, since we haven't been physically here because of COVID, an update of news and praise. My sister and her family, baby Jack's family, were able to adopt a baby, a baby girl, Maddie, Prayers for the health and joy of the whole family. She was born in July. One of our prayer requests is just for people who are waiting. And uh, though I, I don't know what specifically that is, but we, uh, we're all probably waiting for something. <laughs> and uh, everybody. And some of those waitings are, are waiting rooms that are very... Uh, scary and critical. So let's just keep in mind that people around us are going through things that perhaps we, we just can't even imagine. And uh, they, they suffer silently. This is a prayer request. A friend of mine whose two family members are battling brain cancer. That's from Donna DeZeba. And um, so we wanna be praying for those two family members of Donna's. And we also want to be praying continued prayers for uh, Barb Spears' sister, Christina. Prayers for Barb's sister, Christina. Let us knit our hearts together in prayer. Merciful, gracious, loving God, we come before you in prayer, our hearts hungering, hungering for love, hungering for hope, perhaps hungering for meaning, hungering for healing. We also hunger for justice. We're thirsty for righteousness. We long for peace. with all of the faithful today who gather in churches through, uh, all over the earth, 
we cry out to you, our wholeness, our salvation belongs to you, O God. We seek your divine will that the hungry may be filled with good things, that the thirsty may be satisfied, that the oppressed may be set free, that the homeless may find shelter, that the sorrowful may be comforted, that enemies may be reconciled, that the world would know peace and the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now receive our morning offering. Morning, everyone. This is my piano student, Jessica. Uh, she will be providing our offertory today. She's really great.
Let us pray. We bring these offerings to you, O Lord, not because you need them, but because you are holy. We bring these offerings before you and ask that they be used to fulfill, fulfill your holy purposes. Amen. Please be seated. So our scripture today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. And before I read it, I just want to say, Jessica, thank you for bringing a little bit of heaven on earth. That was beautiful, beautiful, very touching, very moving. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the way. You wouldn't want to have been a blind person or anyone with a disability in the first century I mean, nobody would want to today, but in the first century, it was considered uh, that you were cursed, cursed by God. And so with that rationale in, in society, there was cover rationalizations to treat people with disabilities almost in an abusive way. They were accursed by God. They had sinned or someone before them had sinned in their family and this was a just punishment. And so they were treated, abandoned. Some didn't even make it through infancy. They might be tolerated in youth but ultimately abandoned to the street and with no one to look out for them. Uh, they were completely dependent on the mercy of others. Uh, they had no economic means, no home, no shelter. A cloak would be the only shelter they might have. They were poor, they were the poorest of the poor. And so they sat outside the city gates, hoping that someone would take pity on them. I wonder what their own frame of mind would be with years and years of this uh, conditioning. How would they view themselves? I mean, I know in my own life, certain parental conditioning, <laughs> that, has, that is something I had to overcome in terms of looking at 
focusing on all my weaknesses rather than any strengths. Conditioning can change, a, it, can, it gets so deep into a person that that's all they see of themselves. So we can imagine that blind Bartimaeus, anyone like him and others with physical disabilities or mental disabilities in that time, must have thought they truly were cast-offs, unlovables, outsiders, unworthy. You know, I mentioned that Jessica just allowed us to taste a little bit of heaven on earth. Jesus' whole ministry was to bring heaven on earth in very concrete ways so that wherever he went, he wanted to transform a situation with justice and righteousness and peace and love and grace, with truth. So it's interesting to see how Jesus, how these three uh, uh, characters in the story react. Blind Bartimaeus, the crowd as a, as a character, let's say, and Jesus. Because the crowd is going to treat blind Bartimaeus just the way anybody would in that society. They're going to treat him like he, he's a nobody. Uh, the, I don't know if any of you are watching the show Succession right now. <laughs> But there is a term that is used by the corporate higher-ups to talk about people who are way down on the ladder. They call them no real people, no real person, NRPs. And this is corporate code that, that is channeled throughout the higher elite of the company to talk about people who, you can brush that aside, they're not important. That's, this is what blind Bartimaeus is, a no real person. And so the crowd rebukes him. They say, be quiet. Now, you have to understand, he wasn't the only one yelling, probably. Everybody, there would probably have been a whole line of people crying out. And it is interesting that Jesus has to pass by these people all the time, and we don't see him attending to each one individually. Have you ever thought of that? He walks by a lot of suffering. I wonder why. What's his mission then? It's to transform that crowd of people who are heaping abuse on that one person. That's the ultimate game plan to bring heaven on earth, to bring a new community of God's people that can look on someone and see the image of God through the squalor and the dirt of the poverty and the uselessness of their life. See right through it to the creation of God and then be able to restore and lift up and do all that they can, this people of God, this new people of God, to restore uh, this person into their right mind and usefulness and dignity. Why does Jesus single out here on blind Bartimaeus? Blind Bartimaeus <laughs> uh, was not going to be shouted down. You might call him an activist. You know, in traditional societies or any society where social change is not occurring, you need sparks. You need gadflies. You need someone on the system to, to shake it up a bit. Blind Bartimaeus is an activist. I can be a traditionalist. I can see myself walking down with Jesus, thinking I'm 
I'm with the man, you know? And then telling that person, just out of social convention, this, uh, that's not the right thing to do here, please. Just out of social convention. And then, that he doesn't remain quiet, that he, he uh, shouts all the louder, well, then that would start to bother me. I don't know if you're like that. I don't know how you are with social change and progress and people who, who, who are willing to, to push the issues a little bit, make it uncomfortable for the rest of us. Because it's tough for me, I'll tell you. And I'm always lagging a little behind. And I'm not proud of that. So I've started to learn, maybe I need to listen a little more. Jesus heard something in blind Bartimaeus. Not, he knew that, blind, that Bartimaeus was of dignity and worth and so on. But there's something about his persistence that Jesus must have loved. His insistence that he would not be treated this way. That there was something greater and that Jesus represented uh, his wholeness and salvation to him. His being lifted up. And so he cries out all the louder. And Jesus just says, stop. And it's like he stops the world from turning. It's like he stops it. So that Everyone and everything in heaven and on earth can look at this context, this situation, this man, and watch him come alive. Because when, when he hears that Jesus says, call him, and then that crowd that was rebuking him, they have to, you know, they have to do an about face. They have to go, oh, well, well okay, c c you may come now. You may come now. Cheer up. I mean, the wording is, is wonderful. Cheer up. Uh, so, still so condescending. What does he do? Man, he leaps up. He throws off his cloak. And he... Gets to Jesus. He's blind still. Jesus doesn't touch him. Jesus doesn't say, be healed. He just says, go. Your faith has made you well. This isn't some word of faith thing. You know, if you just have enough faith, you'll be healed. You're, so you can speak your situation into reality or something. This is Jesus recognizing and representing to others a tr the depth of what a true disciple is. A true disciple, according to Jesus, in the Gospel of Mark, is not powerful, is not rich, uh, He's someone who is ready to throw off the things that would keep him from following Jesus. Now, how do we know that? Well, Jesus says to him, what do you want me to do for you? The passage right before this, he asked James and John, what do you want me to do for you? You know why he asked them that? Because they say, we want you to do something for us, Jesus. We want you to do this for us. And he goes, what do you want me to do for you? And they say, we want to be your right and left-hand man in the new kingdom. We want to be the viceroys. And he says, well, no, you're not going to get that. <laughs> but you will have to walk the path with me, the way to the cross, in essence, is what he says. That's what he saw in this blind Bartimaeus, a willingness to go all the way with him.
Now, we don't know how he saw that, but it, it says right at the end of this story, Jesus says, well, go your way, go your way. And remember, the Christian movement was called the way, right? And Mark says, and he followed Jesus on the way. There's more clues that we get a look at uh, this, this self-emptying that's required in discipleship in following Jesus. I want to make a shift now and just talk about my own self-emptying for a second. You know, what we have been through as a family is kind of like a twister that came through us and, and tore up everything and blew it all out. And all we have left, think of those pictures when tornadoes come through where all you have left is, is a foundation. And you see those people just standing there out on that foundation. That's kind of what Becky and I have been through and our daughter and with the death of our son. But you know what we found? We found this depth in our own hearts of faith, of love. It stripped everything away and thank God, the foundation is solid. And when, now when, when people talk about their own challenges and problems, my heart goes out to them in a way I never even understood before. It's like I, I feel them in a whole new way. Like there's no separation between us. There was separation between Bartimaeus and the crowd, and he wasn't going to accept that. He'd had enough of all that. He wanted to be connected in with the one who represented life. The way is an invitation. It's an invitation to all of us to a deeper way of life, to set aside the things that just keep getting in the way, and to cry out to God, to Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me so that I can be restored. That's a prayer all of us can pray at one time or another in our life. Just wanted to share this, this picture. You know, I mentioned about disabilities and when you first look at that picture, what do you, what, does it strike you that this person is what? Just the shape of the body, it's other, it's different. And you know, that's how we initially see people, as other, as different. It takes heart-to-heart -heart connection to begin to see this person the way Jesus saw Bartimaeus. It takes connecting from the heart. And there's so many things that keep us from being able to really live out of our hearts with one another. That's an invitation. We pray with me. God, help us to live the way of love and the way of life and the way of new creation and the way of a new self that you hold out for us as real, as a true possibility that awaits us as soon as we open our hearts to you. We ask this in Christ's name, amen. And we'll ask you to stand as we share our affirmation of faith.
Your affirmation of faith is printed in your bulletin. It's from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Brothers and sisters, what do we believe? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. And will you please remain standing as we sing our final hymn, My Life Flows On, hymn number 821. And now may the living Lord Jesus go with you. May he go above you to watch over you, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, within you to give you peace, and before you to show you the way now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>